That Jaguar XKSS may look like it's a historical car, but in fact it's brand new. And Jaguar has just announced that they're actually going to build nine more of those. They're continuation cars that were never sold because the factory burned down and so did the car. So now Jaguar, as part of their historic car division, is actually rebuilding these cars. Well, let me tell you more about it. And that is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Car. Sixty years ago, the iconic Jaguar D-Type was unbeatable. The streamlined D-Type set new standards in aerodynamics, reaching a top speed of 172.8 miles per hour at Le Mans. It went on to dominate the French Classic, winning three times in succession. When the D-Type's racing career came to a close, 25 remained unsold. Jaguar had an idea. XKSS, the ultimate sports car. Built predominantly for the American market, 16 was sold. And one of XKSS's most famous owners was Hollywood legend Steve McQueen. Then one fateful night, everything changed. On the 12th of February 1957, a devastating fire broke out at the Browns Lane factory, destroying nine cars and everything needed to make them. They were thought to be lost forever, until now. 60 years on, Jaguar Classic will build the nine lost cars. After 18 months of meticulous research, XKSS is emerging from the ashes. Jaguar Classic is writing the next chapter in XKSS history. And behind me, well, that is Steve McQueen's car. It had about 250 horsepower, sold for $11,000 originally, and a top speed of 149 miles per hour. Now, Jaguar says this is one of the very first supercars. Do you agree? Could be true, it certainly is a race car for the road. So, please welcome Jaguar Classic Engineering Manager, Mr. Kev Richards. Kev, come on up. Thank you, Andy. Okay. And thank you all for being here this evening with us. Now, Kev, we are all absolutely dying to see what's under here, aren't we? The new Jaguar XKSS. But before that, you've got to tell us a little bit about it, haven't you? How did you begin this incredible project? Okay, well, to begin with, um, it, it took us quite a lot of time to actually go out and, and look around all the different cars that we've got. I have to say that these are, these are part of my passion and part of the last 42 years. I've spent a lot of time researching all of the cars anyway. But uh, first of all, I went out, we looked at a number of cars. We picked up about four cars. Uh, certainly took two really good cars that were out there and two other cars as well and we scanned those cars. Now having scanned the data, most of you realise that these days, when you've got scanned data, it's very easy then to get it into the virtual world. So we did that. But what we then had to do, Tim's already alluded to the fact that we've got such a rich um, bank of information in, in our archives, drawings, specifications, believe it or not, there's, there's minute detail the detail that used to be captured years ago is incredible. The numbers of rivets, the types of rivets, the dimensions, the materials. It's just unbelievable, the data that we've got in our archives. A lot of it had never been seen for about 50 years. So it's, it was incredible to be able to go and grab that data. And that gave us a good starting point. So that starting point, was that a, a really good design from which you could then go on and start building? Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, what, we then, what we then did, uh, we, we got that data, got it all into CAD, as I say, and, and then we started looking at those four different cars that we've got. One thing we noticed very quickly, these cars are not symmetrical. Uh, these days, um, 
Um, what we really try to focus on trying to get the dimensions of the cars, the asymmetry of the car correct, all the way around, around the vehicle itself. But these cars are not. They're all quite unique. Areas around the radiator grill. They're not a, f a full ellipse. They're sharp at one side, not at the other. So it gave us some clues as to what to do. If we want to build a real SS, we have to build in those little idiosyncratic elements into the cars. And that's what we've done on these cars. Kev, clearly authenticity is incredibly important to you and indeed in the world of classic cars. What else have you delivered from an engineering perspective to ensure the credibility of the XKSS? Right, if we start at the front end of the car, the business end, we start with the powertrain. And the powertrain, it's a Jaguar 3.4 engine that was in these cars and it was a specific block that was modified to the D-type configuration. Now we've taken that specific block and we've recast that block, so we've created the tools to recast that block. We've got a recast cylinder head. All of the components in the engine itself are all brand new, and they're all remachined. We've then taken, and, and, and including the carburetors as well, which are uh, sandcast uh, uh, webbers. So we've reproduced those as well. We've then taken the gearbox, we've recast the gearbox, the top of the, the top of the gearbox and all of the gears inside are remachined to the original blueprints from the D-Type. So the D-Type, most, most people will know that the D-Type's a very, very difficult car to drive. It's very difficult to shift gear. This one is exactly the same. So we've done all of that. And believe me, it, it, it's just great to drive it. So you get the real experience of a, of a D-Type or an SS. We then moved on. We moved around to the chassis. Now the chassis itself, two frames. There's a, there's a double A frame at the front and there's a, a section at the back just behind the main monocoque construction. It's one of the beauties of this car. This was the first real monocoque car by Malcolm Sayer and it's just a, it's a work of art and you can see the, you can see the aircraft technology in the car from, from when he was at Bristol Aero. Now the, the frame itself is made of Reynolds tubing for, uh, construction. It's high strength steel tubing, 531 tubing. We've actually reconstructed that tubing with Reynolds in exactly the same way as it was in period. Not only that, we've taken it and, and produced it not in metric, but imperial again. So should one of our customers out there with, um, with, with a genuine D-type or SS have a, a problem with the frame, we can supply them a new frame through our spares division on rare spares, which I think is it's fantastic. So, there's the frame, and they're just some of the finite details. There's, I can go into hundreds and hundreds of details, nuts, bolts, rivets. We've actually made nuts for this car because we can't buy them. You know, I'll say no more, it's just incredible the detail we've got it. I mean, I think we need to know how long this has taken him, don't you? Come on, how, how long have you spent working on this car, Kevin? Well, this, at this point, uh, Tim needs to close his ears, I'm afraid. Um, he didn't hear this, but it's taken about 10,000 hours to do this particular car. And for me, it's, it's been absolutely worth it because what we've got here is an absolutely superb car, which, looking around um, Steve, Steve McQueen's car today, um, it's, it's absolutely spot on. It really is.
clearly had an awful lot of fun, hasn't he? So, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the all-new Jaguar XKSS. There you have it, the first of the continuation cars. That is car zero, and Jaguar's gonna keep this one. They're gonna build nine more, and in case you're interested, bad news for you guys, they've already all been spoken for. They went for about a million pounds a piece. You like it better than Steve McQueen's old car? It certainly is in better shape, even though it's probably worth a heck of a lot less.